So hello there, today I'm starting a new project of a video log book about Bombix Mori, the famous mulberry silkworm. And that is more kind of an accident because yesterday it was a very beautiful full moon here in Switzerland. It was very hot during the day, around 32 uh, degrees Celsius. And then this morning I went into, when I, when I woke up, I passed by my little dish where I had put some eggs of Bombix Mori. 10th of August. I took them from the cellar where I wanted to acclimatize them because 8th of August I took them out of the refrigerator. So I thought now in around 10 days they should hatch from the eggs, but nothing happened. Not 14 days, not 15, not 18, but yesterday, the 30th of August, after 20 days and 22 days, actually they went from the refrigerator, now they came out. And I was happy enough that I just uh, passed by this little dish and watched in, in the moment they came out of the eggs, because this is a real dangerous thing for a tiny, tiny, tiny silkworm like this. It's even so small you hardly can see them uh, with, your, with your eyes if you don't know where they are actually. Under this, uh, under the, here you have the chance here to see some. Yeah, and then you see the, you see the eggs here, this yellowish eggs they already have hatched and the ones that are a little uh, darker they're still the worms inside and you can see them move here on this very very tiny uh, leaves also so they are at le uh, around two millimeters now not more so what do I do I first I saw so where I got all my mulberry leaves from. But luckily uh, a friend of mine, Uli Ramsayer, he's the president of the association of the Swiss mulberry silkworm uh, cultivators. He gave me yesterday one of these beautiful Japanese mulberry uh, trees. So I think for the start I have some of these very nice and big uh, leaves. This is of course one of the very special strains of a mulberry tree, specially made for farming uh, mulberry silk worms. Um, this I will use in the first time I think. And then there's also the possibility to breed them on kind of a artificial powdered mulberry leaves. Uh, this I got from Worldwide Butterflies, uh, just to try out now, uh, as soon as my leaves uh, are finished I have to change to this mulberry chow diet, special diet, um, and you will see that here in the uh, video log book as soon as I have to use them. Now, the, how long have they been in the refrigerator? Here I've written on, on this leaf that 1st of July uh, these eggs were laid by a female mulberry moth. Here you can see they are they are not very young anymore because they changed the color from yellow to this darker brownish gray. Um, as soon as they are a little more advanced in their development and then you can put them in a, I have a petri dish here so I put the eggs inside here close them and then I put them in the refrigerator so let's see what it looked like when the female laid the eggs this is a recording from uh, end of June where uh, I had the mulberry silkworms coming out of their cocoons and I was watching them, uh, the females laying their eggs. And this is an astonishing kind of a video where you can see that she drops uh, one egg after the other. But she's looking for the right 
place to put them. You see that that she's not just spreading them like you spilled some water somewhere, but she really looks where she can uh, put the egg next to the other one. So what do I have today also is a, a male silkworm still living. It's here in this this came out of it came out of this nice uh, silk cocoon here and on the top you see the, the, the circular opening that the adult made with an enzyme that can solve the silk. As you know they don't drink anything, they, they don't eat anything, but if you want to keep them alive, give them a little um, water so that the humidity is high enough so they can stay alive for around maximum for a male is about two uh, weeks. But still he has the, the typical action of a male. He's waving his wings and he's of course looking for the smell of, a f of the pheromones of a female and um, then it cannot it cannot fly anymore because it's domesticated since thousands of years and doesn't have to fly anymore because they bring the males to the female but um, of course still a male is more active than the females that are just waiting there and as you have seen in the video just before or you can see it here again the females are so heavy they even can't move um, um, a long way with the load of eggs they have inside. And here again the opening of the cocoon of the cocoon. That's also why you have to kill the pupa when you want to uh, reel the silk because as soon as an adult emerges out of the cocoon you cannot reel the silk anymore because the enzyme destroyed the silk at that place and then you have to prepare it for example like cotton by spinning. So what I do now here, of course I have to pay attention that the humidity stays very high now but not dripping wet inside of this little um, of this little L1 stage garden here. But what I do, I just cut here some of this nice mulberry tree that I got from Uli and uh, you can put it over the other leaf so this stays a little wet on the knees and hopefully we don't use not too many of these leaves that's very nice like this so and they are covered always with kind of a paper but you don't have to be afraid that they run away like for example Anterea perni uh, the oak silk moss that is very very active as an L1 so they stay where they have their food now and if you want to see what happens with them just uh, go and uh, subscribe to the channel yes yeah, then I send you an email whenever I have a new video or you just go along the playlist and see what happened next thanks for watching